This is Scott the fix a guy Today we have a profile, uh, GE profile oven where the broiler is not heating up. So when we set it for broil and we start it, we notice that it's just not getting any kind of heat when you open the door. Um, you gotta be a little careful here so you don't hurt yourself, but you can put your hand nearby this upper element, that's the broil element. And after even five minutes, I'm not getting any kind of heat coming out of there. So something is not working. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. And what I'll do next is just pull the whole unit out away from the cabinet, from the wall. So I'm gonna grab it down at the bottom and I'm just gonna kind of wiggle and pull it to get it started. If you look back there, you can see there's a long gas line and a long cord. So it's giving me enough to where I can get it out. And now I'm gonna just grab this big 220 volt cord, pull it out of the wall. And I'm gonna remove, we're well, using a quarter inch drive, a couple of the um, screws here on the back that are holding on this panel. Cause I wanna get in there and do some measurements to see if the broil element has continuity and also if it's getting 240 volts coming to it. So I'm gonna pull off this panel and that's gonna give me access to where the um, terminals are for the broiler. So when you do a continuity test, it's good to pull one of the, one of the spade connectors off before you do the test. And when I did the continuity test, I did find that it had 16 ohms, so it, it did have continuity, so I know the broiler, broiler element is okay. When I did the voltage test, I just didn't get the 220 volts coming to the element. So something is not letting the electricity come to the element. It is good to double check that both of your breakers for your oven are in the full arm position before you do that voltage test. So I did have the right amount of voltage coming into the oven, but I didn't have the right amount of voltage coming to the element. So I'm gonna check a couple things. I'm pulling off this panel that covers the controller. And when I did so, I noticed that there were some mouse droppings and also you can see a little mouse urine there. It looks like it was pretty old. It didn't smell bad anymore. So it probably was a mouse infestation that happened previously. And they like to get in there and make a nest out of the insulating material. And they can end up chewing through wires though. And when they chew through wires, that can cause a lot of problems. I'm suspecting that that may be why I don't have power going to the element. Here's where the wires go from the controller down into the oven cavity. If you're looking at the oven from the front, it would be on the oven's left side. Looking at it from the back, it's on the right side. So I'm gonna end up pulling that panel out and taking a look to see if I can maybe find out <clears throat> where the wires are damaged. This is the controller and everything looks okay in there. Uh, the customer let me know that it is a fairly new controller. Here's where those wires again go from the controller down into the body of the oven on, uh, again, facing from the front on the left side. So I'm gonna get that panel off to do that Got it on, I've got the power off and I'm taking these burner assemblies off. First the burner grates and then I'll lift the burner heads off. And then I'm gonna be removing a series of 15, Torx 15 screws that are holding the um, top plate here on to the range. And we can see there's three of them per burner. Here's the, here's the Torx 15. We're gonna zip those out. And once we zip those out, we can also grab the ceramic igniters. I usually use a pair of pliers and I kind of wiggle and lift them up to get them out of the hole. So they're only in there basically by friction. So you can grab them and you can kind of gently lift and pull up. So I'm gonna use also a paint scraper to come in from the sides to push in on two clips. They're about an inch in from either side. And now I'm pulling up using, these are actually vice grips, but you can use pliers. I'm just pulling up on these igniters to get them out. And then I can lift up this top plate 
I gotta get this top plate out of the way so that I can remove some screws on the side. So the screws are just Phillips head screws. Getting off this back panel. Just trying to figure out why, why the broiler's not working. So this is that <coughs> continuity test. Took one of the terminals off that brings power to the broil element. I got it set for continuity and I, I can hear it beeping and I'm ending up with about a reading of 16. So it does have the right amount of resistance for the broiler element to work. Customer let me know that that's actually brand new also. So I am suspecting that maybe those mice have done some damage. Just doing a little bit more inspection here. I'm pulling off this little panel and this covers up the <coughs> terminals for the bake igniter. I'm sorry, for the bake element and also the fan. Now these are a couple of quarter inch screws on the side that we're gonna, we're gonna remove in the back. And these are Phillips head screws remo we're removing from the top. Again, this is the left side is viewed from the front. So if you get those screws off, <clears throat> then you can take off the side panel and that'll give you a better view of what's happening with the wires inside. So I'm just using a Phillips head screwdriver to spin those off. I think there's four of them across the top. And then we have a quarter inch screw here at the very end, at front end. Again, here on the left-hand side, we'll get that out. And then I think we can just get this panel off. Yeah, it looks like it wants to come loose. So I'm just gonna pull it out toward me. Um, it will come off the front too. To get it off the front, you have to kind of lift and move the panel toward the front of the oven. It's okay if it doesn't come off though. You can still kind of see. So there's that big clump of wires. My suspicion is that that may be where there's a break. Maybe a mouse has chewed through one of these wires that brings power. And I look in there, I can see some nesting material there right in the center. So I know a bunch of mice have been living in there. And then I look here and I can see <clears throat> there's some damage to one of the connectors. It turns out that's the wire that brings power to the broil element. So I'm gonna get that out and disconnect that modular connector. So now I gotta disconnect it. I'm looking in there, I can see that there's kind of a burned up spot. And I'm able to find out that that burned up spot is the one that brings power to the broil element. So that I've identified the problem. I just have to splice the wires together and I'll be okay. I'm also looking in here just checking all these wires because I know that there was some kind of mouse problem. This area that I'm looking at, it's kind of hard to see, but back in there you can see there's a latch mechanism. That's used when you use the self-clean to lock the oven door. And then going back toward the back of the oven, you can see the, the mouse nest back there. I'm shining a light on it now. And these little guys like to eat wire. Somebody was telling me that the um, insulators sometimes are made out of soy and they like to eat the soy. So they're famous for getting into appliances and then eating up the wires. And you just have to kind of, it's a pain in the neck, but you have to kind of look for where the possible damages. So I found the wire. I've stripped back about a quarter inch of the insulation with my wire strippers. And now I put on a wire splicer and I'm crimping it down really tight. And this is on one of the wires that used to go into that modular connector that was gonna go to the royal element. And now I've got the other side of it. I'm gonna cut off the damaged piece. I'll strip back a quarter 
quarter inch of that wire. And then I'll just splice those two together. And then I'll plug that modular connector back in. So that's no, that modular connector is no longer involved with bringing power to the broiler. I've kind of bypassed it. But I do need to plug it back in because it does bring power to um, other, other parts of the oven. Interesting, when I was looking online for this GE type oven, there, there's no videos that show how to take off the side panel. And my suspicion was that's where the damage was. So this is kind of fun. This is hopefully will help some other people who have to remove the side panel. So I'm crimping down now on that connection and I'll use some electrical tape too to surround that just to give it a really good safe insulation. I'm just going to wrap some tape around it. And then I'll end up wrapping some tape around the bundle of wire too to kind of get it out of the way. And before I put everything back together, I did plug it back in and I set it for broil and then right away we got power to the broiler. You could hear the you could hear the relay inside the controller up top clicking. So that's a good sign. That means things are working and now the power was able to get to the element and we're able to have the broil function come back. All right, so now we're just gonna be putting this all back together. This just gives you a view of the side again with the panel removed. And I'm gonna get this lined up. I'm gonna kind of push down on this one piece of metal that's in the way, and get the back of that side panel pushed all the way flush. And then I can add those Phillips head screws back in. So it's actually kind of an easy procedure. It's just a bit time consuming because you have to remove the top panel and then remove the side panel. There is a good trick if you're worried about rats or mice getting into your appliances. If you use steel wool and you can put it near the base near any hole where they might want to climb in, the steel wool, steel wool will, will seal up the hole and they don't like the feel of it. So they won't, they won't try to chew into it and they won't try to remove it with their claws. They'll just avoid it. Okay, I'm gonna get that top panel lined up again. There's a pin on the right and a pin on the left. I'm lining those up into a couple of slots and then I'm going to lift up on these igniter wires, make sure that they're not being pinched. I'll push in these, these pins on the side, get them out of the way. They go into a little hole there and then I'm gonna gently lower it as I lift up on the wires. And I'll push down those igniters. I'm kind of holding the, the burner uh, base as I push the igniter down into the hole. Here I'm just making sure everything's lining up good. And then I'll push down on the plate so it locks in on, on the forward clips. And then once I get the igniters in position, I can add those Torx 15 screws back in. So there's three of them per burner. And again, you can kind of line things up with your finger here to get the holes in the top to line up with the holes in the burner base. And then you can put the screws in by hand and then tighten them up. I'm just setting the clock. So I press the clock button. I type in the correct time and then I press start and that will log in the new time. I'm just testing the broiler again. So I set it to high, press start. You can hear it click. And then when I checked on it, I had a nice, 
uh, heated up broiler, had a nice red element. So everything's back working good. Here's a picture of what the element looks like when it's all fired up. Bright red color is good. They do smoke a little bit in the beginning when they haven't been heated for a while, but that's okay. It burns off pretty fast. So this is just using those, the Torx 15 driver to put those screws in tight. After reassembly, I'm just checking all the burners to make sure they light okay. It's a good procedure. And I'm gonna set the clock. This is the circuit for the bake and the broiler that's is on a tech sheet that is on the back of your oven. And I'm just putting these burner grates back into position. They have little tabs on them. So one tab points towards you and the other one, the tab points away from you. I'm gonna put these panels back on. So this one has a little tab on its right side and left side has a quarter inch screw that holds it. Get that tight. putting those screws on the side panel on the back. There's a, I think there's four quarter inch screws that go on there. To help hold on that side panel. And then there's one here at the bottom. So once we get those on tight, we have one more panel we can add on. And then we're just gonna get the, we're gonna slide the range back in to the cabinetry. And that's really easy to do. You just wanna make sure you take your time when you first start it so it doesn't rub on the sides of the cabinetry because it can damage, sometimes it can damage the cabinetry. If it doesn't slide really well, you can spray some Windex underneath its feet and it makes it slide a little bit easier. So this panel is gonna go back on we'll go ahead and add these quarter inch screws that hold it on. There we go, we're gonna get these tight. My battery ran out on my driver, so I'm using a pair of vice grips to tighten it up. All right, we're gonna plug it back in. Make sure it's all the way seated. And again, we're gonna slowly get this in position and then kind of wiggle and push it back in. I'm gonna push it all the way back as far as it'll go. And I'm just setting the clock again. Here's a nice picture of those elements when they're all fired up. Nice and hot. Thanks so much for watching, and if this video has helped you, please click on the donate button down in the description to help keep our service going. Thanks again for watching.